You're saying clever lawyers have helped them circumvent the law. Harish is in fact a panelist with Speak Asia. He's joining us at this time. Harish, have you been told about this uh, e-magazine before this? Have you received it? Do you believe it's worth 11,000 rupees? Are you confident that Speak Asia is on solid ground, Harish? No, I have not received any e-magazine. Neither have I was told about the e-magazine. And was just told this money for the membership. No, was it asked for because they're saying it was a subscription and you were not promised any returns. We heard the CEO tell us no returns were promised. This was just a subscription. It was for the e-magazine. Do you believe the company is now completely changing tack and saying things which were not what was told to you earlier? I was told this is for membership and you'll get a return, 1,000 rupees per week. And I was never told anything about the e-magazine. So you're saying at the time at which you signed up, there was no mention of e-magazine. Just stay with me, Harish, because so Shriram Khanna began what, by defending this is, company and what it's doing. I'm not defending they're, any they're company. Lying, they're yes, sir, they're yes, lying through their nose, Mr. Yes, sir, Khanna. Yes, sir, yes, sir. I said very in the first instance. You if said there's nothing are, wrong with what they were doing. No, if there, if, there, if there is a misrepresentation, then there is jurisdiction under the Consumer Protection Act. The gentleman who called, he can go to a consumer court tomorrow and say that this company made a misrepresentation to me and I want my money back. And so can everybody else do that? Apart from that, if there is a misrepresentation, even the Reserve Bank of India has powers to enforce under the non-banking financial companies domain. Now, the Reserve Bank of India can say that this is not a membership scheme, it is a financing scheme. And say it's a non-banking financial company which is operating in India without our permission, they can shut it down tomorrow. I am not defending the company, but I am only saying that you can't say that it is a pyramid scheme which is illegal because there is no law in India which outlaws pyramid. So, so uh, the lady is right. Unless there is a law, I, I believe there should be a law which should protect consumers you know, who are putting investing money, uh, you know, with uh, tall claims being made by a company of huge uh, returns. So, if there is no law, there should be a law. No, but, but can can't... nothing be done till then, Mr. Malik? If there's no law, uh, investors are worried. What if this company runs away no, one RBI week from has, now? Because uh, yesterday we saw a lot of bluff and bluster. Yeah. The, C Rahul, the direct, the Rahul. CEO came yeah. here. Just one second. I want to tell our viewers just one thing, Mr. Malik. That it now turns out that the CEO Manoj Kumar was appointed just three days ago. So on the 15th is when he was appointed when this whole scam first broke. So he's been in that job for exactly three days. Before that he told us that he was just a consultant. He's just been made CEO. So those and you know we went to Singapore. Turns out there's no survey farm there. I'm expecting those pictures. We're having some technical issues because there's a problem. Uh, we couldn't send our pictures back from Singapore because they wouldn't speak to us. Uh, they kept us waiting. So we're getting those pictures in a while. But given the fact that these people have been changing their stance almost on an hourly basis, Mr. Malik, what happens? They're not speaking today. What happens if they run away? What happens to people's money? Rahul, whatever even has been already remitted, that itself is illegal because Reserve Bank rules are very clear. <laughs> Such type of remittance, remittances are not allowed by any bank unless there is a specific permission and those specific permissions are only given when there is a branch office properly approved by the Reserve Bank of India. I am very clear on that, number one. Number two, uh, somebody was mentioning that they have paid service tax of 50 crore rupees. Who is paying the service tax? S service providers are the members. So is the members are paying service tax or the associated companies paying the service tax? I am not very clear on that. Can you ask these people? that who's paying that service tax? 